I know people's immediate reaction is, oh my god, copium, copium, copium. Um, the question is, at what point is what's going into it? So at what point is the output considered good enough that it is no longer copium or hopium? Right? Um, so we can make the argument two months ago when all we had was one cinematic and a bunch of promises. I think you could make the argument that anyone at that point who said, oh, Dragonflight is going to be great, was high on hopium, right? They, they were fucking smoking that shit, uh, chain smoking that shit. Although, Swanky Tiger, how you doing? Although, now, two months later, we, we had the cinematic and we had the promises from Blizzard, all right? So far, it seems like Blizzard is keeping every single one of the promises that they had made. Every last one of them. Uh, you know, they, they're they talking to us so, so much, uh, which is surreal. And not only that, but the things that they're saying to us is good. You know, it, it's not bad. I haven't heard a single thing that I can look at and be like, Oh, I'm not I'm not happy with that. There's things that I look at and I I'm like, oh it could 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 have been a, a little bit better, but so one of the interviews that I covered this morning, uh in Morgan Day's interview, um he actually said what I've been saying. Well, he actually affirmed what I've been saying. Uh Angry Cupcake, how you doing? As someone watching from the side, everything looks quite good with everything in Dragonflight. Yeah, I agree with you there. But, but okay, so Morgan Day was saying what I've been saying for quite some time, which is the idea behind this expansion, the idea behind the launch of the expansion is to lay the foundation. Everything in this is being designed to be future-proof. And that actually includes dragon riding. So the way they're looking at dragon riding, from what I can tell, uh, take so, how you doing, bro? Um, from what I can tell, what they're doing with dragon riding is they know that dragon riding is a, an expansion only system. It's designed as an expansion only system, but in its design, they were also looking to the future and saying, okay, what if this system does move into the future? Is this possible? And so they designed it in such a way that if it does move on from Dragonflight, if Dragon Riding remains a thing, it is absolutely perfectly fine and it will be able to, to remain a thing. Uh, so everything right now is being designed from the ground up as future-proof. They want to make what we've been asking for for so long. And this is why I don't quite understand the, the calls of, oh my god, Hopium, oh my god, Copium, Oh my god, you guys are just sucking Blizzard's dick. I don't quite understand this, because all of us, literally all of us, kept asking for evergreen content. We wanted content that, that you could progress through, that would always be available, that, that would make the game feel more whole. Now we're getting that, right? We're getting that. That's what Blizzard's whole goal is. That's what they're looking to implement in this expansion. And now people are like... Uh, Nah, fuck it. Who cares? And it's kind of like, ah, uh, oh my god, dude. Um, remember that Ordinary Flying was expansion feature only in the beginning? Takes so true. Actually, very fucking true. Danthu, how you doing, bro? So for someone like me that is only playing casually, what content is there for me to do? Since I don't raid or PvP, I still haven't seen any real content. Okay, so Ariani, the content that you said you're, you haven't seen yet is because it's not been tested yet. So uh, we know that there is an absolute plethora of open world content. Okay, so th they're really going hard on the open world content. And what Blizzard have also said, which a lot of people sort of completely missed. Um, Ian explained, so up until now, patch content have worked as followed, right? As follows. The expansion launches, the first patch, usually three months after the launch of the expansion, uh, that first patch is usually a balancing patch, right? So we'll get some kind of uh, fixing some of the classes that's broken, rebalancing things. Then about three months after that, we get the first real big boy expansion, right? This is the 
the one that introduces the second raid for the expansion, and the one that introduces the, the whatever next feature is, okay? Then the patch after that, we get uh, another balancing patch, and then another big patch, and then another balancing patch, and another big patch, and so on and so forth. So Ian actually said, this is not what they're doing this time around. So they're actually now taking a look at their patch content and saying, we don't need to introduce big patch, small patch, big patch, small patch. What if we did more patches? So instead of going 1.5 to 2.5, 3, 3.5, what if we just fucking went straight up? So what if we said, you know, uh, patch 10.1 launches, and then we have 10.11, and then 10.12, and then 10.13, and then 10.14, and they just keep releasing content as and when it's ready. So Ian's idea here was that they want to do more smaller patches that introduces more content overall. So rather than just looking at your salty, how you doing, brother? Um, rather than just every six months you get new content to do, they're going to give you more content to do, although this time around it's going to be smaller pieces of content. So you can expect to see Torghost come back in one of those patches. Um, how's your name from 40 Clips? Night! How you doing, brother? Welcome to the channel. Thanks for the first time chat. Um, so that's what we have to look forward to in terms of patch content. Now, to your Mage Tower is another thing that they're looking at. Um, like, Ian, Ian was asked by Tauli, what are the chances of Mage Tower and Torghast and things like that coming back? And Ian said, not at launch, but definitely a possibility in patch content. Um, so I think Ian and the team are going to be much more focused on casual content. Uh, the kind of stuff that you can do that doesn't give any power upgrades, but might drop mounts, might drop pets, might just be fun. Which I think is good. That's fucking perfect. So Neptech, how you doing, bro? Thanks for the first time chat. Really appreciate that. Um, I think that's brilliant. That's exactly what World of Warcraft needs right now, is more casual content. Uh, you have dragon riding. Ariane, to answer your question more directly, what do you have to do at launch? Dragon riding is going to be a huge feature at launch. I mean, the big one, and this is actually a lot of people missed this. Professions is no longer just professions. Uh, Red EU, thanks for the first time chat, dude. Really appreciate it. Welcome to the channel. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That's how it should have been from the start, but those idiots lock legendaries in it. True. Right? Fucking true. Uh, Torghast would have been such, such a good feature if legendaries wasn't part of it. Like, imagine if you could do Torghast just for the fun of it. Imagine if there was no weekly lockout, no bullshit, just go in there, go have fun with your friends if you want, you know, it would give Blizzard the opportunity to add more floors, make it harder, because there's no, you're not gonna miss out on your legendary, so you can make it as hard as you fucking want um, the big one though, that a lot of people have missed out on, is Professions is no longer just Professions uh, Morgan Day, in his interview with the Starting Zone, uh, was asked about this, and they said, Professions is now an end game system alongside raiding pvp and dungeons so they're designing professions to be an end game activity you're gonna go out in the world and there's gonna be actual content as a crafter for you to do there's gonna be actual content as a gatherer for you to do that isn't just standing inside the city and crafting things you know until your fucking mouse breaks um it, it's gonna be an actual system uh, then they asked Morgan Day again about this. The starting zone asked Morgan Day about this again. Uh, or they asked him to sort of double down on it. Or if they're, how you doing? Seven Raven, how you doing? Uh, I'm wondering if I have to switch all my play to B uh, BS and go armor class profession. You could do that. Although you just, you don't have to, right? Because you can just put out work orders and you'll do work orders for other people. So you don't have to switch uh, if you don't want to. Um, I think there's a number of very interesting things that's happening here. Oh, but the other thing that asked Morgan Day that he also confirmed is that professions will feel more like classes. So it's going to feel like an actual class. When you're on your blacksmith, they want it to feel the same way it would feel if you're on your warlock. There's a talent tree, the talent tree gets filled out, 
uh, the talent tree makes certain things better, certain things worse. Um, kind of like 14, but I feel like it's just a little bit less than 14 still. So I've done a lot of research on the professions because I'm really interested in it. Uh, the one thing that it does not have is there's no rotations. So in 14, you have a rotation to craft, which is actually really cool. I don't know if that gets tedious later on in the game. So maybe like at late game, crafters hate the fact that there's an actual rotation and that you have to do the rotation in order to craft things but i know as someone that just did a little bit of it or me how you doing brother um as someone who did a little bit of it um i enjoyed the fact that there's like an actual crafting rotation um and that that rotation determines how strong the item is or how weak the item is or you know, you could break the item, uh, potentially, if you're not careful. So I kind of like that. That's not in World of Warcraft right now, but again, this is the first iteration of the system. So there's a good chance that we're going to see this system evolve over time, and eventually it's going to become something much bigger. Which is, that's the thing that I'm looking forward to most here, is the, for the first time in a very long time, Blizzard isn't looking at Dragonflight as here's Dragonflight and nothing else exists outside of it. Blizzard is looking at Dragonflight as here's Dragonflight. It is an expansion inside World of Warcraft. So whatever we do in Dragonflight, we need to remember that there is a world outside of Dragonflight that also exists. So we have to keep the rest of the world in mind and we have to know that there's going to be stuff in the future so whatever we design it has to be future proof i am fucking here for this i am so here for this dude you have no idea